just as a postscript on these uh, coilovers. This is welcome to the Dumb Design Club. We have the bottom part, which is this part here, and this is threaded into the bottom of there. Then we have the height adjustable part. We can screw uh, screw this up and down. And then we have this um, ring, which is for the, you can see the stabilizer bar there. And then we have the, the, the spring uh, preload bizzo, which basically you just do these up until they just capture the spring. Okay, so the, the dumb design part of that is this part here is threaded. If you want to lower the car, the idea is you loosen this one off here and you screw this down into there, which which you can't do because it's attached to the the stabilizer bar right so we've got to undo this one here off the side of that so that can swing around except that oh no it can't it doesn't clear this part here of the suspension itself how are we going to do that then oh, all right so we might if we can move this wall we can't move this because it's it's bolted in um with three bolts up up the top here which is okay on this side because you can get to them this side here has the shroud that shrouds the fuel filler. So we've got to take all of that out to adjust this height. The question is, why is this threaded? I mean, if it wasn't threaded, all you'd do is loosen this and loosen this and just turn it and that would just sit there and when you finish, you tighten it back up again. I mean, that makes sense to me. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the shocks back out again and I'm gonna take that part off and I'm gonna machine the thread out of it. I've been through this a couple of times over the years. Shock. Shock absorber, here's the components. This bit here, this this sprangly helix sort of dude, that is the actual shock absorber. This spring here is the thing that absorbs the shock, right? The rest of the stuff and the rod and this bit down here, that's the damper, okay? And what that does is damp the spring oscillations as you're driving along. It stops it going boing, 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 and it goes boing, boing, and it stops it, okay? That's what that does shock absorber damper these come from factory wound up with the correct preload now preload on springs is a, a misunderstood term so that is the spring preload this is a linear spring so if i wind that up to here so we're always getting spring bind you know how how much stiffer that that spring is going to be none because it's the it's a linear spring all the way through its travel it has the same capacity if you like it'll take the same weight so winding this one up the only reason you'd wind that up is if you want your car lower you know and you need to wind that down so you wind that up out of the way so you can get it wound down a little bit the correct way to set up a shock is put it in your car then this little knob on top here you go all the way off and go up like one two maybe three clicks you know at the start and that's if you understand what everything's happening what, what, what's going on here so then you take it for a drive and your car's driving along and it's doing this little boing boing goes over a bump and it does this little jiggly thing you wind up the damper until it stops just go up a click at a time until it stops bouncing your shock set up do you want a stiffer ride easy you can wind this up a little bit that all that's going to do is wear out shock faster if you want a stiffer ride put a heavier spring in it this you can wind it up momentarily but this is a valve inside and all it does is wear it out over time your shock's going to wear out anyway so what you do you, you know a year or two down the track your car's starting to bounce again what do you do you go up a click or two until it stops bouncing simples oh no my cappuccino with bc coilovers is riding way too high at the rear what can i do Fear not, intrepid cappuccino owner, with the new handy dandy Barrel Brothers improvement, I will take all your fears away. <laughs> The new handy dandy adjuster from Barrel Brothers allows you to do quick and easy height adjustments on your BC coilovers without having to piss around for hours and take the bloody shock out to modify it.
it's as easy as loosening off this one that locks the collar in place and loosening off the height adjuster which is already loose and then screwing the top down to your desired height okay. oh no this is moving too hard but look now it just slides around doesn't it and once you have achieved your desired ride height it's as simple as pushing the link around to where you want it and locking it up thank you barrel brothers what would we do without you i think i've talked myself into a corner with that one <laughs> Come on, BC, you know you should do it. It just makes it so much easier. And it'd be cheaper to make, because you don't have to thread the, you, you just you just need a piece of tube with the tab on the side of it. Okay, so this thing here is not a safety item, um, because it's got, it basically just bolts down to the top of the, or the seat belt mounts behind the seat. Um, it's more of a, like, well, it's a strut brace, basically. A pretty strut brace. Uh, they call them mouse traps because in the event of a rollover, they, they come down and like mouse trap over your head. Thing is, if you're upside down in this, you've got bigger problems than this mouse trapping down on your head. <laughs> so I thought I'd take the opportunity and show you what configurations you can run these things, because there's four different ways you can run them, and which I'll demonstrate now. Okay, so this is obviously number one as a full coupe. But if we just carefully reach in under here, they have locks on them as well, which I'll show you momentarily. So they have a little lock on them as well, just there, so that they can't pop off. These are aluminium, which is why they've got a couple little dents and I think somebody strapped something down to the roof of this at some stage. But yeah, we're pretty lucky with this one, it doesn't leak. So there's configuration number two, and this is a T-top. Of course, configuration two is gonna be pretty bloody obvious. Targa. Configuration three. Okay, final configuration is as a full convertible sports car. So if we just reach in here, push that one across and pull that up, that drops. And then we push this button here and turn, full convertible. So what we found out fairly quickly is, this is not for a cappuccino. It's about that much too wide. I'd say it's for an MX-5 and we've been sold a pub. All right, let's go and, uh, up on Marketplace. So as you know, we're trying to make this cutesy little sports car look like a giant muscle-bound V10 hypercar. Not an easy thing when you're such, so cutesy-wootsy. But um, you know we've got the kit for the front, we know, you know we've got the flares, we know we've got the wings. I think I just felt it needed just a little bit more. And I spotted these that would work quite nicely. So, and they weren't overly expensive, but um, they're really nicely made. Like really nice, you know, really smooth surface. It's got a little bit of waffle down here, but like that's easily fixed. And it's only a few screws to uh, put it on. So I figure, why not put one on? It's gotta be worth a second of lap. It's aluminium, I'd say. So if anything, this is, this is probably heavier. It's actually detracting from the performance of the car, but because it's cool, it adds horsepower. So, you know, the balance is maintained. I'm pretty happy with that. It looks like it's got a gap here. This actually changes height through here. You can get a whole guard where it comes with a big slot down here as well, but I wanted to go with a flare because I was putting a flare on the back and I like, you know, if you've only got a flare on the back and you've got a complete replacement guard on the front, it just, I like to stick with the theme. Anyway, these are really good. And uh, these are the guys that um, sell them. SAP, Original Auto Parts, come with instructions. It's all in Japanese, but like translate on your phone, we'll, we'll sort that out. And um, yeah, just exactly how I did it. 10 horsepower at least, conservative. As you can see, the front bumper's off here. Drug deals. The rear bar was brand new. I think I told you in a previous episode that, that was brand new. The front bar is used, and there's such a, there's a nice big crack in here. So I've tried it on the car already. It fits pretty well. We've got to get some four-inch spotlights to go in these 
things here. Come up with something for the indicators. I don't really like that's to fit the standard indicator in, which is this one here. But if you're looking from the front, it sits about here. It's not on the front, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Maybe we can put something in the corner here, or I've been trying to find a um, four inch spotty with an indicator in it, but no, you know, they're seven inch, they're eight inch, you know, they're, they're like a spotty with a indicator around the outside. Can't find them for love of money. So not a four inch anyway. So we're gonna have to do that, but I thought that we'd throw these bottom ball joints in as well while we got it up there and I would have been helped by my daughter who would have been sitting here and done a little wave except that she's over there and she's too shy <laughs> say hi Maya <laughs> overnight pass from Japan well another care package from Japan anyway thanks Jesse okay, it's heavy and it's got cats on it so it must be Japanese Ooh. I can smell diff all already. <laughs> there she blows, folks. It's a two-way RS cappuccino diff. Because the cappuccino with diff we've got at the moment is pretty damn noisy. So I thought if we're pulling it apart, why not stick one of these in as well? Yes, another piece to the puzzle, folks. Okay. Chino LSD. What, we need to be on LSD to see the vision of the Viper Chino? I don't think so. In other Viper Chino news, this arrived today. Yeah, get your mind out of the gutter. It's, it's uh, a suspension bush material. So I'm going to have a go at uh, machining up some bushes that go in the back of here and around that. They should be fun. I've machined up a bush to go in there. As you can see, we've got the, um, the original metal piece. I cut all the plastic, all the um, gunk off that. So what we're about to do, push that metal piece out of the center, grease it up, stick it in the vise and see if we can push it in. I've put a little chamfer on both ends because these things need to be double-ended. Now let's see if we can get the damn thing in there. It's gonna need to wipe down afterwards for sure. Man, I hope this goes in. You wanna put this stuff, whenever you're putting bushes into whatever you're losing, um, urethane type bushes. You should put the stuff in because there's nothing worse than squeaky cars. It really isn't. Hmm. You see, it's, some of it's gone in and some hasn't. I might have to make that chamfer a little bit bigger. Alrighty, so I, I took the little edge off there with the rotary deburrer. And I've whacked a bigger chamfer on that one, so let's give it another go. Come on, in you go, baby. It's cocking to the side again. I will shove it in on the press. Got it in there, and there's the uh, steel, but it, it hangs because of it's, it's squished. It's actually come out a little bit longer, so I might have to do a bit of a dodgy. I should just see if it, it actually fits the car. So, um, yeah. But that's a tomorrow job because I'm going home now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.